This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. This week, I decided to check out an alternative to Dropbox. This is kind of cool. It's called Git Annex Assistant. It started as a Kickstarter last year and it raised well over their funds on the first day. It's kind of exciting. Now, this is a Git alternative again to a company owned file sharing service similar to Dropbox. Git Annex Assistant will let you synchronize a folder onto each device of your choosing, whether the contents are on a folder on the same location, a USB, a different computer, or where have you. Now, I did mention that this was based on Git. It's also based on Git Annex. Now, if you go to their website, they basically say Git Annex allows managing files with Git without checking the file contents into Git. While that may seem paradoxical, it is useful when dealing with files larger than Git. It can, which Git cannot currently easily handle, whether due to limitations in memory, time, or disk space. So basically, this is telling you, cool, I can actually upload things like, you know, my MP3 files or, or my Hack 5 episodes or what have you. Now, for me to install this, first I had to get the precise PPA version for Ubuntu. Everything is on their website, so they make it pretty simple. You go to install and you choose the file version that you need. Now, first off, I did try just get, doing apt-get install git annex, but if you click into Ubuntu, you're only going to get git annex with that one. Now, what I wanted to do was get the web app for the assistant. This is what I really want to check out for this segment today. So I had to use sudo apt-get repository, get the PPA, update, and then install git annex. Now, when I did that, it actually gave me the web app and a very easy way to get to it, get Annex. This is going to automatically open up the web app. So the first thing you need to do is create your very first repository. The default is in slash and annex on the desktop, uh, in that desktop directory. Then from there, you can start creating folders in other places, such as a USB drive, another place on your computer, another computer, or up in the cloud if you want to. I created a second one on my computer in the home directory. So now I'm going to go ahead and let you see how exactly I did that. So on here, you can see that I have one which is Shannon shared files. And I can also choose to add another repository, configure, and also see down here where I can restart the entire daemon. Whenever you restart it, this is basically going to let you restart the syncing. It's going to pick up any kind of syncing capabilities that are going on in the background. Any files that are currently being uploaded would now be seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart the daemon. Okay, so now we see I have both here, Shannon shared files, that is my home folder, and I also have Shannon Ubuntu PC, which is the desktop slash annex. I actually have a physical folder right here on my awesome Sailor Moon wallpaper desktop. And in here, I have one file. Now if I close that, I'm gonna go into the home folder. And I created the shared folder, which is my second repository. I also have 1412 snubs. So both of these files are the exact same thing. I was just able to drag and drop into my shared folder and that automatically synced onto the annex folder on my desktop. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing, you would go to add another repository. So this gives you the option, and I'll zoom in right here. This is going to give you the option to add a repository from a removable flash drive, which will actually back up every time that you plug the flash drive into your computer. You can share it with other, other devices, including Android devices, which is really cool. You can share with a friend on another computer, a local computer on the same, uh, on the same network that you're using, or add a completely different repository. It also gives you the option to use Box, RSync, S3, a remote server, Glacier, and Internet Archive. Now, of course, I haven't gotten into those so much, but what I will do is go ahead and add another repository onto my current computer, my little laptop that kind of works sometimes and kind of doesn't. So I'm going to add another repository down here, and this is what you'll see. It's going to say, add another local repository. Where do you want to add this? You can choose your folder. So for me, I have document, shared folder, a bunch of other ones in there. So I'll do another uh, shared git folder. Make repository. And it's going to ask you if you want to combine it with your existing one 
or if you want to uh, combine the repositories or have the files placed in two separate repositories and not actually sync with each other. Obviously, I want them to sync with each other, so I'm going to combine them. You can name it, shared to, a description, files, yay. Repository group. So this gives you a group that you can put them into since you can make several and several repositories. This will give you some kind of organization to all those different ones. So when you get into it, you don't get completely screwed up on where all those different folders and directories are. So this is client, a repository on my computer. Syncing is enabled and you save changes. So now I have all three here. Syncing is enabled in each one. I can go to settings and edit if I need to. I can disable them and remove them. I can also restart my daemon. Now I'm going to open up my home folder and go ahead and open up that new folder that I just created, shared git. So I want to share with myself, I'm going to say 1413, some really old show notes. So right now that's just right here, 1413. And if I go back, it's currently not in there quite yet. So go ahead and restart. Now, obviously, this will be a little bit faster in the background. If you just left it running in the background, eventually it will sync all of your documents. But since I'm doing this for Hack 5, I want it to go a little bit faster. So I go ahead and sync. And I'm going to refresh. So now I have. 1412 and 1413 in all of my different folders. And these both should also be shared with my annex folder. And it is. So there's my new file. So now you know how to use Git Annex Assistant, which is a very easy to use web app with Git and Git Annex as the background on them. So it's very simple. I really liked it. And it's also a very great alternative in case you don't want the entire government seeing everything that you're doing on the internet. You can just use your own repositories. Now let me know about your feedback and what you like about this segment and tell me what other options you use. Do you use OwnCloud, for example? That's another one I've heard of. Definitely send me an email at feedback at hack5.org and I'll love to check it out. This time of the year, it seems like everyone is trying to spend some time away from the office, whether it be vacations or just enjoying the warm weather or hacking across America as I am. It can be really challenging if you work in IT, if you're a net administrator or a sysop, if you will, because the users, they always need support. The networks, the systems, they always need management. And that's why I highly recommend GoToAssist from Citrix. It has three essential tools, all built into one easy to use integrated cloud-based platform. They've got their GoToAssist remote support. It lets you provide live or unattended support from any PC, Mac, or mobile device from anywhere. I'm doing it a ton on mobile. Uh, you can do it from your iPad or Android device for free from their app. I know I've been using it a lot. And so you can take your time away from the office too. You know, you could go all over the Midwest as I'm about to. Plus, with GoToAssist monitoring, you can proactively identify these issues before they become a big problem. And you can easily track all of these incidents with the GoToAssist service desk. So sign up for a special 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HAK5. That's GoToAssist.com, promo code HAK5. This week in the Hack Shop, we're having a very special discount of 10% off your entire order for this week only. You can head over to hackshop.com and use the coupon code SECRETJULY, all one word. Now, once again, our deepest gratitude goes over to you guys for supporting Hack 5. Thank you so much, because we couldn't do it without you. No, seriously, we couldn't. Yeah, seriously. Um, <laughs> so, check this out. Hi, Darren. I Hey, oh, right, I'm back in the studio. Um, I'm here on a little... For one day only. For one day only. Darren, Darren Kitchen, Kitchen in studio. studio. Okay, that was kind of awesome. Yeah, that was weird. Um, so <laughs> I'm on a little layover because I've been hacking across the Americas and I'm about to go out uh, on another big trip where... Um, so where did you just go? I was just in Seattle for TorCon. Okay. Uh, or, or, yeah, TorCon Seattle, which was amazing, right? And we're going to yes. have some stuff from that here uh, soon, um, as well as San Diego and, and LA and 
Medford and Yeah, Eugene. I heard you had a, a random appearance in San Diego from that was fun. some chick. That's so weird. What? That looked just like me. Oh, That's right, crazy. yeah. You should check yeah. out the video blog on HackacrossAmerica.com yeah. so weird. for weird stuff like that. It's yeah. it strange. But um, <laughs> yeah, so we're done with Hack Across I-5, and it now becomes Hack Across America because I'm <laughs> at NIST. Um, so if you haven't already signed up at HackacrossAmerica.com, we're going to have a huge blowout over at DEF CON in Vegas. I'm going to be out there for weeks for B-Sides and, and Black the band, Hat. Right? And, yeah, yeah. Awesome. It's going to be really good. So, um, so I hope to see you guys in Las Vegas. We'll have more details on HackacrossAmerica.com as far as the meetup is concerned uh, around the DEF CON time period in Nevada, uh, as well as if you're in Helena, Montana, uh, or the other city in Montana, or, um, you know, there's, there's other one? cities. That, yeah, yeah, and, no, then, and then there's going to be like Minneapolis and Denver and Austin, Texas, huge oh, cool. one in Austin. So just stay tuned to HackCrossAmerica.com and just, I'm here for That's a little awesome. layover before we head to Vegas. Yeah, well, it's good to have you back up. in studio today. Very exciting. Yes. Now, of course, as usual, we value your feedback. So email us, feedback at hack5.org, and let us know what you think about Hack Across America, what you think about my most recent segments. Let us know what you like and what you want to see us cover. Yes, and let us know if you've cracked the challenge coin, because I've only yeah. seen a couple of people on the dark net. And I know you, what it means. You have one of these. Go ahead Wait, and tweet with the little hashtag on the thing and the, use the one-time pad. Anyway. I just said too much. Let's go. <laughs> With all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. Trust your technologist. See you on the dark side.